The period referred to as the Wild West is a time period defined as having existed from 1865 to 1895, a short-lived period in American history that quickly preceded the Civil War. The genre that glorified the time period, the Western, primarily existing through the 1940s to the 70s, lasting seemingly as long as the past it painted. Most sticking to the heyday of the period, when the United States was regaining a government after a war amongst itself. And briefly somewhat lawless for all, as Washington regained the footing it had worked towards the century prior. However, some looked to the end of this era. Not often looked at proudly, the Wild West often portrayed as a fantasy of libertarianism. The country was founded on and to see it at the end suggests the loss of freedom so sought by its inhabitants. One of the last things for seminal Western director John Ford to direct, the man who shot Liberty Valance, some way, can be seen as the sign of the end of his and longtime friend John Wayne's careers. Both common collaborators on screen and synonymous with the Western genre, they made 12 films together, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, the last Western amongst them. It's, a, it's an end of the West movie. Mm -hmm. It's a death of the West movie. And Wayne was always very shy about making death of the West movies uh, because he understood that on some level most people associated him with the Western. The film itself depicting the end of the West and the closing of the rugged free-for-all freedom that came with it. The film set around the end of the Wild West and changing of America, this set amongst three different characters. Ransom Stoddard, attorney at law. Come up here and run this meeting for us. The first of the three protagonists, Ransom Stoddard, played by classic Hollywood star Jimmy James Stewart. A somewhat bumbling young lawman looking to settle in the West. What do you want, Barry? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. This coming after the end of Stewart's own nice guy persona in movies. Whilst he certainly didn't need to devolve into villainous roles, the type of character he had played, and quite successfully so, a joyous do-gooder, no longer became popular post-World War II. So, come 1950, starting in the film Winchester 73, more rugged, harsh persona for the actor started to build. So, 12 years later, Stewart almost seemed to return to the character he had once played, if only acting the same for a few moments. Playing a happy-go-lucky young man, however, only to have that ripped away from him in the roughness of the West. This kind do. the movie's voice of law and harder changing of times, Stewart became the catalyst of the changing West and a symbol of such throughout the country. He is a man who has been taught the pen is mightier than the sword and so feels desperate to institute that in such a society. You better start packing a handgun. Gun? I, I don't want a gun. I don't want a gun. I don't want to kill him. I want to put him in jail. This often shown through the film first arriving on screen on a train, a symbol of a growing America, the machine that more easily linked with the mass of states, allowing them to become more widely available and money to flow amongst them, allowing them to grow. The second character, integral to this being Liberty Valance, played by Lee Marvin, the polar opposite of Stoddard. This is him. He's a manic man tearing across open desert. He represents the direction of the West, as turned into the mania that now possesses it. In the absence of law, it leaves no protector and no regulator of the greedy or murderous that Valance represents. He is the reality of libertarianism that has become prevalent. 
he is the notion that given freedom, some may prosper, and some, given time, will use its implications to do what he wants. In freedom, a new power construct will grow, and it will grow through the means it finds necessary. In some, it finds violence necessary to form and gain influence. And so, freedom is taken by the fear guide. Valence is the unwanted notion that freedom, liberty, cannot be maintained unless there's some regulation of it. It requires something to look over it and promise to maintain it. That's what you're up against with Valance. He's almost as fast as I am. The third character is Waynes, Tom Donovan, the in-between of the two archetypes. He, like Valance, is a product of the West, but unlike Valance, has become the beacon of light of strength that watchfully fights against the full tyranny, the type who protects those in need, but agrees with the privileges he enjoys within the Wild West. Oh. Well, I know those law books mean a lot to you, but not out here. Out here, a man settles his own problems. However, he knows the unsustainability of his life. As much as he denies it, he is aware of the danger of characters like Valance, but is scared of the implications of getting rid of him. He can't face the fact that he requires violence within his life to stay needed. His job exists, provided danger exists, and he's fine pushing it away just far enough to allow it to come back and keep him handy. His morality is faced with his humanity. He's a good man who knows what the right thing is to do, but fundamentally is scared of change. Like the Lost Boys of Neverland, he wants to remain a boy forever, putting off things like marriage that would suggest he's growing up and continuing his amusing standoffs. Whilst he can understand the importance of it, in some way he resents Stoddard for being the calling card that his own section of the world, that is the West, is over and it's time he grows up. The movie fundamentally about the mythology of the West, and how this mythology has shaped the modern United States. Well, you're not going to use the story, Mr. Scott? No, sir. This is the West, sir. When the legend becomes fact, print the legend. To develop a modern America, the West seemed to exist to kill the old to empty the land and finish the crumbling institutions to allow new ones to be built. A major clash amongst the characters is the city's political fight for statehood, this allowing institutions within government to start building. However, those who oppose such as Valance do so in attempts to hold on to the old sentiments to an old West. However, there is some truth to Valance's side, as America is changing it will take everything with it. The last we see of Wayne's Donovan, he's drunk, subsiding with the knowledge of his unstoppable future. And when we see the future, very few of the old characters remain. Only Pompey and the Sheriff Link Appleyard, both quiet characters who stand back from conflict, those are the only types of people who can survive. The film, in many ways, represents the end of the Western genre as well, at least in the classical sense. Coming of the early 60s, it was soon before the genre would die out for a few years before returning in the late 60s and 70s from Italy, however vastly different in the form of the Spaghetti Western, a genre that more sided with the brutal freedom of characters like Valance. This was the end of the Noble West, and ended not with a shootout, but in a courtroom. Hi, this is Luke. If you liked that video, please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications about new videos.